everyone and welcome back to Mining Network. So we're here with Cornish Metals at their South Crofty project in Redruth, Cornwall. Now this is home to one of the highest grade tin deposits in the world. South Crofty has extensive history that dates back to the late 1500s. Now predominantly in the past it was polymetallic minerals that were mined here like copper and then at depth this copper mineralization changes and so since the early 1900s they were mining tin. So the mine closed back in 1998, but it's on track to be back in production by 2026. But before we go explore what the team's up to here, let's learn about tin. Tin is a relatively scarce element with an abundance in the Earth's crust of about two parts per million, compared with 94 parts per million for zinc, 63 for copper, and 12 for lead. Most of the world's tin is produced from placer deposits, and at least one half comes from Southeast Asia. The only mineral of commercial importance as a source of tin is cassiterite, which has the chemical formula SNO2. This is the same mineral historically mined from Cornish Metals South Crofty Mine and surrounding licenses. Tin is often overlooked as a critical mineral, commonly associated with the humble tin can, even though packaging today accounts for only 12% of the global usage. As of the 1st of July 2006, under the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Directive, the European Union imposed a ban on lead in all electronics, which at the time was the primary element used for electronic soldering. Almost overnight, the lead was replaced by other substances in electronic equipment, such as tin. Today, almost half the tin consumed every year is now used as a solder in electronics, followed by chemical uses, tin plating, batteries and alloys. According to the United States Geological Survey, China is by far the world's largest market for tin and also the largest producing country. In 2022 alone, China produced 95,000 tonnes of tin, which equates to 30% of world refined tin production of 310,000 tonnes. China is closely followed by Indonesia, with close to 24% of global production, with third and fourth place being Myanmar and Peru, with approximately 10% of global production each. Global reserves indicate a similar dominance among jurisdictions in Southeast Asia, with China, Indonesia and Myanmar accounting for almost half of all tin known to be economically mineable, still within the Earth's surface. Approximately 30% of all tin supply comes from recycled sources. Tin can be infinitely recycled to the same high quality due to its intrinsic properties and economic value. Closing metal loops by increasing reuse and recycling has the potential to improve resource productivity while reducing energy use, emissions and waste disposal. With the majority of tin supply originating in developing nations, there are multiple potential threats to stable production rates and guaranteed access to the required volumes of tin demand to developed nations, especially in Europe and North America. Recent examples of potential supply chain issues from the largest tin supplier include the ongoing trade friction between the US and China, as well as an increase in environmental standards within China. Starting in 2016, the Chinese government has taken various initiatives to improve the environmental performance of the industry, impacting its ability to scale tin production, although a large percentage of concentrate is now imported from the Wa state in Myanmar. Furthermore, Indonesia's talk of banning exports of tin ingot injects significant fundamental uncertainty into the speculative mix. The country may be looking to replicate its success in the nickel sector, where a ban on exports of unprocessed ore generated a build-out of value-add processing capacity. No date for any ban or restrictions has yet been set as the government studies potential timelines. But the threat of disruption is already impacting market dynamics, with Chinese buyers trying to get ahead of any change in export rules. Most recently, in April 2023, the Wa state in Myanmar announced its intention to suspend its mining operations from the 1st of August 2023. The International Tin Association estimates this would represent about 10% of the world's tin concentrate supply. To make matters worse, there is currently no primary supply of tin in Europe or North America, something Cornish Metals is aiming to change. Recently, Canada, the United Kingdom and the United States have all published lists of minerals which hold a critical role in their country's national security, economy, renewable energy development and infrastructure. 
Given the supply uncertainty, lack of reserves within developed nations and the technological uses of tin in all electronics as well as growth applications in electric vehicles, solar energy and wind energy, it is no surprise that tin is listed as a critical mineral by all three countries. According to the International Tin Association, the global market for refined tin is currently worth 7.5 billion US dollars annually. The ITA also estimates that the tin production sector needs around $1.4 billion of investment to deliver an additional 50,000 tonnes of tin per year by 2030 to meet a looming surge in demand. We recently sat down with Cornish Metal CEO Richard Williams to better understand how the tin at South Crofty originally formed hundreds of millions of years ago. Between 370 and 290 million years ago, you had the collision of the Northern European, North American tectonic plate with the African plate and that was called the Variscan orogeny, um, went on for 80 million years and the end result of that is, or the, the ultimate result is that during that collision it ends up in heating of the Earth's crust and melting and that created the intrusion of these granites that intruded into Cornwall, so Land's End granite, Carmonellis granite, where, which is where, just to the south of us, uh, St. Austell granite, Dartmoor, Bodmin Moor, and a lot of mineralization formed in relation to the intrusion of those granites into what we call killers, well, sedimentary rocks which were cooked and hardened and fractured, and those fractures were the cracks that all of these mineralizing fluids came off the granites and filled, and that created the copper, tin, lead, zinc mineralization throughout Cornwall. Cornwall's mining history dates back to the Bronze Age, when copper and tin were abundant, essential materials for making bronze. Trading for tin in the region, then known as the Xitrite Zone or the Tin Islands, can be traced back to the Phoenician and Roman times. The Romans in particular sought copper and tin from Cornwall to produce bronze for weapons and armour. Early mining activities primarily focused on alluvial mining, where tin was collected from stream beds due to its heavy nature. South Crofty is a significant mine and it recorded its first production in 1592. Initially it operated as a copper mine with tin as a byproduct. Miners would extract high grade copper veins near the surface by digging shafts. However, as mining operations delved deeper into the underlying granite, they discovered a transition from copper-rich sedimentary rocks to tin-rich mineralization in the granite. At South Crofty itself, the transformation into a tin mine began in 1905, when the new cook's kitchen shaft was sunk to access the granite beneath the metasedimentary rocks known as Killis. The South Crofty tin mine is fully permitted with significant existing infrastructure in place just waiting to be restarted. South Crofty hosts the highest grade tin resource globally that is not in production today. Through the digitalization of historic mining archives, the team now have the ability to see South Crofty and many more Cornish tin mines within a modern 3D model. The model of South Crofty clearly demonstrates that this is a world-class vein-hosted mineralized system with copper and tin. Similar to a vein-hosted gold system, but in this case, you have tin in the granites, and also copper, tin, zinc within the overlaying metasediments. Historically at South Crofty, there have been 48 different structures that were mined for tin. The footprint of the near surface copper mining is about five kilometers long by two and a half kilometers wide. Beneath that, the footprint of the underlying South Crofty tin mine of the property is approximately a kilometer and a half by 600 meters. So it's got enormous potential to grow laterally, east, west, north, south, and to depth. These structures are still mineralized. The South Crofty mine did not close 25 years ago due to a lack of tin. The mine closed because of prevailing long-term tin prices from 1985 when the tin price collapsed until 1998 when the decision was taken to close the mine. The current resource at South Crofty contains 2 million tons within the indicated category and a further 2 million tons in inferred and an average grade of around 1.6% tin, totaling 65,000 tons of contained tin currently. In the project area itself and the central mining area, Cornwall historically produced close to 400,000 tons of tin. 
When looking at the structures within the current resource and what was mined above them historically, you can really see potential to add significantly to the current mineral resource estimate. If you look at extending known structures a couple of hundred metres along strike and a couple of hundred metres down depth, you quickly realise a target potential in the order of 17 to 21 million tonnes of additional resource. This would not include any further discoveries at areas such as the Wide Formation or United Downs. Cornish Metals holds approximately 15,000 hectares of mineral rights within Cornwall, 1,500 of which sit within and around the South Crofty Mine and the other portion covers locations around Cornwall, some of which are also of strategic importance. These include immediately south at the Great Flatload and the Wide Formation, and also 8 kilometres east of South Crofty at United Downs, where recently high-grade copper and tin intercepts were discovered. The metallurgy at South Crofty historically has been very simple. High recoveries were achieved in the 1990s, ranging between 88 to 90 percent through a combination of gravity and flotation. Given the mineralized material in the ground has not changed, the company expect recoveries to be of a similar high. As part of work being conducted on the upcoming feasibility study, Cornish Metals are exploring optimization techniques with modern technology to improve the recovery rates even further through a combination of ore sorting and pre-concentration. Any enhancements on recoveries could allow for a smaller mill, which in turn could reduce the capital required to restart production. What we have here is a selection of cores from some of our recent metallurgical task work drilling. We're logging it, we're processing it through. We start that by uh, going out and picking the core up from the drillers. Uh, the core comes back. We piece the core together, so it, we jigsaw it back together to make sure that all of the core is uh, the right way around. It's geologically uh, coherent. From that, we then start putting meter marks uh, on the core. Those meter marks are important for us to check recoveries and also we use this for when we're domaining uh, our geotechnical properties. So all of our geotechnical work is based off the feel of fractures. Um, we take RQDs, um, all of that feeds into the, the test work programme. This particular example is a really nice example of strong alteration around um, classic, what is termed colloquially as blue peach. Um, blue peach being um, coming from the colour of the tourmaline, so the tin, which is obviously the mineral focus that we're, we're looking to identify, um, is hosted uh, primarily within blue peach. The blue peach is the um, it's the main stage of cassiterite mineralisation that we see uh, in the parogenesis of South Crofty. There are some later stages where the tin is uh, remobilized and re-precipitated. Um, but in this particular case, uh, this structure, the tin is um, really quite visible. It's really nice. Um, and it's a true example of what we hope to find. You mentioned that obviously we're about 100 metres deep and then below us is a lot of water. Yeah. What is the current kind of plan of action to you know, get rid of that water? We're constructing a dewatering plant. We're going to treat the water that we pump out of the mine using one of our uh, deeper shafts. Uh, that water, yes, yeah, is going to get treated. Uh, it's then going to get put back into the uh, adit system and then it's going to drain out into the Red River where it naturally flows out to sea, basically. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that's got to be quite a structure to actually get that amount of water from this deep. Like, how, how does that go about engineering So we, we, have, uh, we have quite a lot of pipe work that's going to be low down the shaft. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done in two phases. The first phase is going to take six to nine months. Um, we're going to take that down to 195 fathom level. Mm -hmm. There's a pump station at 195 fathom level, which we will um, refurbish. Uh, we will then lower the pumps again from 195 fathom level down to the bottom of the mine, which is around 4, 4, 5 fathom level, and then dewater that. It's a two-phase approach, and all of that water is going to be returned to surface, treated, put back underground, and then, um, as, as the mine water currently is naturally draining out, mm -hmm. so the, the water we're putting back into the system, into the rivers, will be cleaner than what is currently naturally flowing out. Alongside dewatering the mine and conducting a feasibility study, 
The team believe there is more tin to be found close by South Crofty, which if true, could fundamentally change the valuation of the company. Approximately one mile south of the South Crofty mine is a granite formation called Carnbray. From 2021 to 2022, drilling was conducted on the south flank of Carnbray, specifically targeting the Great Flat Load, a historically significant structure in Cornwall. This structure sits beneath the original copper mines and is characterised by a flat formation with 1-2% to tin mineralisation. Similar to South Crofty, the mineralisation is found within tourmaline veins known as blue peach. The drilling performed in 2021 into 2022 followed up on previous drilling done in the 1960s by Camborne Tin Ventures. The objective was to explore shallower areas of mineralisation above known workings. Eight holes were drilled and one hole aimed to intersect a hypothesised feature called the wide formation, which was considered a potential new flat load parallel to the great flat load. The wide formation was successfully intersected around 600 metres below the surface, measuring 12 metres wide with the best tin mineralisation occurring over a 3 metre thickness. Further drilling is planned to determine its extent as it holds significant potential for South Crofty. Looking ahead, drilling is scheduled to commence in mid-2023. Each hole will target the wide formation, ranging from depths of 500 to 800 metres. The objective is to explore its potential similarity in scale to the Great Flat Load, which extends over several kilometres. We are hoping after uh, our pro drilling programme uh, mid-2023 that we can prove the wide formation is similar in its strike extent. Um, and basing our ideas of the Great Flat Load. The Great Flat Load was mined extensively, uh, generating hundreds of thousand tonnes of tin, um, like many hundreds of thousand tonnes of tin. If the Y formation uh, develops into something similar, it's, it's uh, a real asset to South Crofty and the mineralisation that we have here. The Great Flat Load and the Y formation are around one and a half kilometres south of our surface infrastructure at South Crofty. However, it's around about a kilometre away um, from underground workings. There is potential for us to extend our underground workings at South Crofty south to intersect uh, the wide formation um, and work it at depth um, using our existing workings. There would likely be some uh, surface infrastructure over there in terms of like an air shaft, but it's unlikely that we'll have any um, real main infrastructure over there. Everything will be at South Crofty. <music>